Hello, welcome to the studio. Head to Head is now in Milan, and Ciao. I have a fantastic guest, Mr. Dan Choda. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We're going to discuss Milan. Yes. Did you go to Milan Fashion Week or like me, Not you women's. cheat and look no, at that? I cheated. Online. I cheated. But I don't even know whether it's cheating anymore because I was thinking about this on the way here because when you first asked me to do this, obviously I was a bit concerned because I wasn't at the show. But obviously with my colleagues who were at the shows, we were texting throughout the whole four yeah. or five days. So as if you were there. And fascinatingly, the feedback that I was getting that sometimes I had a better view um, than some of my colleagues. Not from Raw, yeah. <laughs> if you're not and then well also, sat. but even if you, even if you are, you know, some I guess some designers are getting incredibly creative with their lighting and all of these mm. things. So even if you were front row, it was actually sometimes a much clearer view for us. Um, but then the opposite also was true. So there were some collections that I didn't necessarily think worked as I saw them. Um, but for my colleagues who were there in the room at the time, it did. It totally won them. The over. difference is when you can see a video or you see photos. Yes. I think photos don't always do justice yeah. to, you know, the movement of the clothes. Yeah. But let's go into it, and we will probably show photos to our yeah. audience. But yeah, yeah. Um, I want to start talking about a general thing that I I feel happened in Milan. You know, fashion is going very much back towards elegance and tailoring and more formal wearing and et cetera, et cetera, and they wear, a lot of they wear, which is what Milan has always been. So yeah. in a way, I felt that the Milanese didn't do anything new, but actually they do what they do best. And, and we will talk when we get to Paris, we will talk about the new, you know, thanks also to Celine, the new bourgeois and the look, the BCBG, the Parisian bourgeois. But in Milan, there is the, counterpart, the Italian counterpart of Milan that I remember when I was a, a younger is called La Shura. La Shura in Italian, northern Italian dialect means the madame. Mm. And it's in between negative and funny, you know, it's a little bit tongue in cheek and it's this Milanese wealthy bourgeois, but it's a little bit like a Calvinistic, I don't want to show off, but I wear my mink down to the floor, yeah. but then all the rest is very yeah. severe and castigated. And um, you told me about this, <laughs> tell me about this Instagram well, account. I am not on Instagram, as people know, uh, but I actively know yeah, you're what's spy on there. Instagram. Yes, exactly, I think no one's not on anything, we're all somewhere. Um, and I heard about this about a year ago from friends of mine who lived in Milan who would tell me, um, about these kind of wonderful uh, shura account, yeah. Um, these Just women the who basically, glam. and uh, yeah, and this this account wonderfully kind of. I guess what's interesting about it is post advanced style and Ari Seth Cohen's film and book yes. and blog. That kind of um, explosion that happened a few years ago, which very much focuses on American kind of upper. upper Upper West Side, New York so the women. the preppy American? No, 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 oh, no, those kind of, you know, those more yeah, eccentric, the, the, like the yeah. type women. Um, this is, I guess, the European, I guess, partner to that in That's some way. It's very Milanese, because in Rome, these kind of women would look very different. Mm. The, 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 the Roman um, upper class woman is much more full of gold and too much tan and too much skin, even if the skin is not good enough anymore. While the Shura Milanese, which is exactly this one, <laughs> is very quaffed, is very discreet in, in her own elegance, you know? <laughs> and, um, but I, I, I'm happy to talk about this and to show this to our audience because in a funny way, this is what we saw in Milan. For sure, this is what yeah, is, this is what's been also in fashion editorials. This look, yeah. This even Ricardo Tisci's Burberry in some way. It's referencing this, It's referencing this sort of um, grooming, actually, and yeah. also I guess there's this heritage aspect, which you're saying these hand-me-downs or these mink coats that seem to have a long story if they stay within within your family and a good handbag and good shoes. Yeah, the, 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 the durability of, of the investment of yeah. what you spend to have a, a good thing. This Shura is not really a Shura. This is a little bit of a pop one already. <laughs> this is not what I, but I mean, it, she still made it into the account. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good, but I, I, this will take me straight to Ferragamo. So mm. as we read, the lovely Paul Andrew has now been finally um, declared or named um, creative director of the yes. whole brand. So he started with the accessories, then they gave him 
the women and now he's controlling the brand, including advertising everything, and so he had to put on pose his own brand. Uh, but that's a different story, it's not Milan. Anyway, I absolutely love what he does. Yeah. And I know you don't love, but just like what he does. Uh, so we no. can go head to head on this. Uh, no, uh, there's no, I think it's a very, it's, it, it looks really appropriate. And I think, um, I think in terms of when you are working or you have worked for so long with shoes and with leather, and for a brand like Ferragamo, I think what's really wonderful here is the transition into the outerwear for me is really strong here and the leather and the sort of more heavy pieces I thought were really wonderful. And I think it's a very good collection in the way that it does all the things that you want a good collection to do. Um, it, it looks back to the heritage, it brings out archival prints, it sort of remixes a couple of things, it takes its inspiration as this collection did, I believe from a shoe in the archive, a patchwork wedge mm -hmm. shoe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the colors were beautiful. It's all very, very appropriate. Well, the reason why I'm so pro, uh, can we probably stop on that, on that suit, on that um, bright orange suit? Because it's a good example. One reason why I'm such a pro, uh, Paul Andre, and by the way, we're talking about an Englishman overlooking a very Italian, you know, Tuscany, Italian brand um, with a Frenchman who's doing uh, the, 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 the menswear. But anyway, so it's an Englishman in Milan, which I think it's always good in Italy to bring some international flair. But what I like is that knowing what Ferragamo went through, you know, they gave the ready to wear always to one of the sisters, Giovanna, and uh, it was, you know, after the, the Ferragamo shoes were not the glamorous, and don't forget that it was one of the first internationally glamorous brand, Ferragamo, when Salvatore brought it to Hollywood and that shoe, Marilyn the Monroe. typical, exactly. So when all of that stopped, they tried with many things and it wasn't good enough. What Paul does is not revolutionizing it in the sense that he's bringing in punk, no. which wouldn't be appropriate, but it brings Italian tailoring with a modern twist. And yeah. this suit that I don't know if we're showing is a little bit weird because it's an awkward way of wearing a, a jacket, but it's, and it's not only a styling thing because the, the actual jacket has drawstrings. Draw, yeah, yeah, exactly, drawstrings. Um, it's a good example, you know, it's, it's what probably Bottega Veneta should be, and it hasn't been. Yeah. Shall we jump to Bottega? Yeah, or shall we continue because I think this? what this is is a discussion about what we expect when a new person goes somewhere. To a, to a classic brand. Exactly, yeah. and particularly when you're looking at Milan, you, you have all of these ideas and you have all of these preconceptions about what Milan fashion is and should be and should remain in some ways. Yeah, but clothes, I think, well made, good quality to be sold and worn. Yeah. Not to change the face yeah. of fashion, even yeah. if Mr. Armani 40 years ago changed the face of fashion exactly. in a way, but today they have a different... They do. Well, but I think the criticism, the criticisms that people often place on Milan, as I said, in our men's head-to-head, -head, is that they're, they're the reasons that make it so successful in lots of ways. And I think there's always a tricky balance to play with you know, remaining classic and also with a brand like Ferragamo, who is keeping your customers and your clients comfortable, but also sort of edging into, um, I guess, your client's children or your clients, or the next generation of that client. And I think with Bottega, uh, there was so much speculation around what would happen here in this debut collection from a new artistic director um, who used to work at Celine. Yeah, Daniel. And, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly, Daniel. I think the Celine, the, the, the sort of desperation for Celine, the, the kind of famine that people have felt um, for Philo, Philo famine, um, and the stupid T-shirts that people are making and the Instagram accounts yeah. that are running. This kind of hysteria, which I yeah, have found... I mean, he didn't ask for No. That. I mm. found it really amusing to watch this because it sort of identifies this kind of rather embarrassing um, need that people have for this, some of these things. But anyway, that's a different conversation. Here, I think what I enjoyed about this is that it, it made me scratch my head. You know? I didn't watch yeah, this I and could... I didn't love it. I didn't watch this and I didn't hate it. I have had to negotiate what's going on. And that, that's a feeling that I often have with um, J.W. Anderson, or did early on. Now I kind of recognize what I, he's doing. I couldn't agree more. more. It's funny because this is probably the only brand for which I read all the reviews. Because yeah. I, needed to, I needed help to understand. <laughs> yeah. 
Because my first reaction, and we did a panel on it. I, I chaired the panel on this on the day, so I didn't have time to scratch my head. What did they say? And my, I don't exactly remember, but my feeling was of something that was right, but not there yet. I, I think, actually, he tried too hard to be in the trendy Bottega, and the result was something, some things very good and very interesting, some good ideas, yeah. some good styling, but some very awkward fittings. Yes. And at the end of the day, people like us, that's, or even civilians, that's what they noticed, because I think I, people didn't like the gigantic intrecciato, and I think that's probably the best idea. I think it's a very good way to say, okay, let's move on, but let's keep it. Yeah. But then look at this jacket, for instance. Yeah. It's a very good example. It's a very weird fit. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you have to put a lot of money for the jacket because it's not going to be cheap. Yeah. And it's a very weird fit. And we're not talking Balenciaga where that's what you expect. But you didn't expect it's that. It's the Shura Milanese. But you didn't Milanese. expect that once upon a time at Balenciaga. Balenciaga started and shocked us and now... Sorry, I'm talking them now, Balenciaga. Yeah, exactly, yeah, now yeah. those hips yeah. and these shapes we have accepted. Yeah. It's the shock of but the this new. this is trying a little bit too hard. I mean, I don't know Daniel and I don't... We haven't seen before what he's done. I think he should not try too hard because he had some very good ideas mm. and there were good colours and good material and I didn't dislike the stomping down with those boots and exaggerated boots that took away all the two classic Bottega. But then, I, I, by the way, I think the menswear was probably the best part of the show. Really? I didn't like the menswear. Oh, really? Why? It, it all felt slightly... To, it almost needed taking down. I think the whole collection needed taking down 20%. Men's as well? Yes. There's okay. almost too many things going on here. And you mentioned the boots. I think that's the one thing that really struck me when I was watching the show. They looked almost too comical. A lot of the girls couldn't walk in them. And there's something about that energy <laughs> that really... Yeah. Yeah. It, it takes away look... a little bit of shuragine. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it that's does. A... Shura... It does. Ness, you but she didn't even... look powerful to me. She looked like she was kind of... She Lug was wearing it. her brother's shoes? No, that just she wasn't necessarily that comfortable, you know? That, that she wasn't striding. And again, it's exactly the same thing that you would notice with high heels. Some models make them look really effortlessly and some, and some yeah. don't. But I think with boots like these, I think it was quite interesting because a lot of the girls are sort of tripping over themselves. And yeah. I think what he's also given us is that kind of fugly shoe, you know, the kind of <laughs> patchwork yeah. padded, which I think was really funny and beautiful. So there's a kind of a sense of humour here, which I think is, is missing think, from a lot of Milanese fashion. I think that the best, yeah, oh, yes, well said. But the best part of it, I think, is the padding and the, and the gigantic intrecciato, not when he's trying too hard to do the tailoring a lot them now, or that, you know, this, it's weird. This yeah. leather armour, you know, in yeah. <laughs> total look. I don't know. I think... We need to, and we talk so often about time and how quickly we judge people. I think he needs to kind of get into the groove of this a little bit. Yeah. I'm sure we the next to one time. is going to look really different. Yeah, he just feel like me that he, he can. He's a good designer. He yeah. can. He just have to relax and, and t t you know, take some distance from the expectation and the pressure on him. It's a big brand. It's a billion brand. And it was for a while the, the cash cow, not the cash cow, but one of the best, the second best brands in the, in the caring stable. Mm. And then it started going down and down and down. And now they need, they need a low away, probably. You see what I mean? They, yeah. they don't need another Gucci because they have it, you know, a Reeve. But they need a low away by JW. Yeah. You know, like reboot. Yes. I think... As you say, there are lots of ideas here, and I'm, I'm quite glad that I was surprised, because I think very easily another designer could have just given you the classic Bottega codes, ramped up a little bit, 45 minutes. Or Phoebe, because why do you think they hired him? Mm. Why do you think Kering woke up one day and said, oh, what a good idea, why don't we take the number two at Phoebe, you see what yeah. I mean? I did find those kind of, um, those necklines and things just really ugly. I mean, I just didn't like them at all. So that, that I didn't need time to think about. Um, but again, I think... It's funny, I think they're quite interesting. Really? The, do I like them personally? Not particularly, but I think there is some... 
ideas there. Well, it's interesting, I wanted to ask you, because at the beginning you mentioned day wear, and I wondered whether we can still even talk about day and night wear. What do we mean when we say day wear? Well, that's a good point. I think, I think there is still a difference in embellishment and choice of material. I think leather for me and cashmere there, definitely day wear. It doesn't mean that I would be in shock if someone shows up in a leather gown at the Oscars. No, I would think it's very cool. But traditionally, Milan is very, you know, the good. I think, for me, Milan is winter fashion. It's mm. outerwear, it's mm. the coat, it's the cash, it's Max, Max Mara, Mara, you know, uh, camel coat, is Bottega and Ferragamo leathers, and that's what I call day wear, you know, that's something you can go to the office or to, you know, the women on lunches for lunch yeah. at Marchesi or, yeah. you know, as opposed as the sequin or the silk or whatever, uh, all the banality I'm saying for evening. Well, then we have Versace, which we could probably... Look well, can we talk about Gucci for a second first? Oh, yeah. Because I think that Alessandro Michele delivers something different this season. And let apart, I mean, the fact that he's very, he's very focused on his stories and then he had the mask and all the meaning around that. I just don't want... I, we don't have time to go into that. But uh, what I noticed, it was that he moved on from the granny vintage look. And people don't really realize it because you still have, you know, the androgenity and some weird looks. But if you put this show next to the first two, you can see the difference. Yes. And there's a focus on tailoring again, on outerwear, on, on stuff that looks, because everything is wearable at Gucci, but here it looks more wearable, a little bit less bonker styling, well, in a frame of Gucci today, yeah. but, I really, I mean, I was less in lust than usual. Yeah. <laughs> because it was a different take from, uh, because fashion right now, it's not my favorite thing, you know, in, 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 in the look of it. But I thought it was very interesting what he did and what he delivered to us here. I mean, well, the thing with Alessandro is he delivers a lot. Yeah, you have to digest. You have to digest, but also I think by, by giving us a lot, it's impossible for anyone to look, not find something in there. Oh, there's something for everyone. But also, yeah. from a professional point of view, as a journalist, you know, quite often, and people have said this before, if you don't like a collection, you know, you don't go backstage and tell the designer you didn't like it. You think that you find that one thing that you liked. Yeah. And here, you can find something really easily. Yeah. Um, but I think in some cases, that can also, what, my, my musings on Gucci quite often and, and here, is when does, when does it become costume and when does it become fashion? I think quite often, and this show in particular, which I really enjoyed, I loved it. I was really into it more than I ever have been, I will say. Um, and I think why I was really interested in this is because these models reminded me of cyborgs. There's a super futuristic Did you see the video? I mean, happening. the music, the, the walking, it was quite, yeah. it was very, very strong. Yeah, it was really quite intense. amazing, yeah, yeah, very intense. And I, I mean, I love it. I'm, I'm, Everybody knows how much I love the work of Alessandro, but I thought that what was interesting was the, the really a step forward, a step further from what he has done so far. And it's interesting when you talk about costume because the difference between the costume of Gucci and the costume of other brands, and I always say it's too costume, is that when then you go into the store, nothing is costumey. Mm -hmm. All of what you see here is there, mm -hmm. and it's there just hanging for you separately, and you can make it be what you want it to be. Yeah. And I absolutely love that. I think why this was a good collection and why it was smart is because, it, as you say, it moved slightly away from the, the vintage-y yeah. thing, the chintzy thing, um, but pushed it into a more cyborg -y world. And I think, you know, we're in that interesting time where designers are a lot of the good ones, and by good I mean you know, the ones that are really listening to and reading the news and thinking about you know data and all of this stuff. He is very into He's doing that. The today, you know, in the same way that uh, he's very do, open to what's going on. The Balenciaga store that opened in London recently, you know, mm. has these kind of uh, mannequins, lifelike mannequins, standing there, kind of staring at you like a Madame Tussauds kind of thing. And they reminded me these things all connect. You know, this this kind of other yeah. other. Other and I think Alessandro is one of those designers that are very in tune with what's going on around him. Yeah. And you can see it in the collection, like it or not. I personally love it, but like it or not, you cannot deny that. Yeah. 
Which brings me to Donatella. You wanted to say something about Versace. I have a strong idea about this show. What did you want I'm to sure say? I'm sure you do. It's the daywear thing I wanted to talk about mm -hmm. in another way. But I think what was interesting about this collection is, um, you know, Donatella gives us grunge and gives us 90s. But I think Versace and Donatella in particular have kind of gone into this quite successful rut, if you like, of being very self-referential. This collection in A little bit too much. This it's collection in particular had, you know, Richard Avedon photographs that he had taken of Donatella for a fragrance campaign and reprinted on the T-shirt. So tick merch is done. You then also have all of the kind of um, iconic Archives. nods to the archival pieces that are currently being reblogged and reposted everywhere. So again, I think, again, when we talked about menswear, it felt like a marketing person is involved in, in some of the design decisions. Um, and that is not necessarily a bad thing. As a collection, I didn't love it, and I think that's partly because I found the styling a little bit over the top. It kind of took over some of the we pieces. Said, we said the same exact thing for men. You and I at this table, yeah. remember? Yeah, exactly. There's, and something, there's something weird about what Donatella is doing now. Maybe the fact that for the anniversary of Gianni's death, she did this amazing thing with the four top models, and it was so successful, she's now becoming a little bit too self-referencing. There's too, it's been going on a little bit too much to going back to what it was to go forward in a glorious way. Yeah. And the second thing that annoys me a little bit because it's not what Versace is, is that there's the jumping on too many trends. Mm. And as I said for the men, Donatella makes trends and, and there's like, and I don't know if it's the new owner and they need to sell more, I don't know, but it's, I like it more aesthetically. I could find stuff that I would wear more, but is this what you want from Versace? And it's too much day wear. Versace is not day wear. <laughs> Versace is let's have a party, right? Well, yeah, it's night that turns into let's day. Let's make it glamorous and, and no? I think from the styling point of view, I think what's interesting, and I've just often wondered this, I've just often wondered this, I'm wondering this now actually, yeah. how quite often designers will have images from magazines and photographs as references, you know, quite often for a mood yeah. or a look. Yeah. And the thing about a photograph, and we've all got garments at home where you put them on and you stand in the front of the mirror and you think, yeah, that looks nice. And then you stop moving. You go and get your bag and your keys and you think, hang on, this is, I need to take something off. And that's what I'm wondering. The, a lot of these looks, the way they're all layered, Needed some. they look like they've been lifted from Maisel pictures from the 90s, or they look like they've been lifted from portraits taken at that iconic period when Versace was, was that. And there's something about the translation to that now that feels very heavy and over the top and super layered. And it's a pity because if you dissect it, there are some pieces that are absolutely yeah. outstanding. Yeah. I've just seen passing by a coat that it's, you know, and it's a pity because I think sometimes less is more when you have the possibility of producing, uh, look at that coat, I mean, of producing things like that you don't need eight layers just to make sure that there is a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of, you know, you reference Stephen Meisel, but there, I can see a little bit of Mew Mew in here, yeah. which is weird. Or <laughs> I can see a little bit of, I don't remember what I saw the other day. I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of, you know, it's, but and I'm so sorry because I really, really love what Donatella Versace, the woman stands for. And I, but I don't know, I don't know their figures. Maybe she needs to change. But the less is more adage that you came up with, I don't know whether that's also more about, that's just a taste thing, isn't it? It's, un, it's almost, you know, because more can be more for some people. Of course, in our or your taste. Oh, I'm thinking Versace, that, I'm thinking about what Versace is with those dresses that were like them or not, they were a statement, they were Versace. You just want the dress and that's it. And yeah. that's Versace, she didn't need to do seven layers to put a little bit of everything in it, you know? I think what this exposes is this, is this question around when brands or when journalists are at fault for saying, this is the Versace woman. I think, yeah. I don't think any of this is the new version of the Versace woman. I want to know who the Versace woman is now. And it feels like, and loads of brands make them this mistake where they just keep going over the old Versace woman. And that old Versace woman, obviously socially, politically, had a very different position to what women do now. now yes. And that's yeah, always the misstep here because I think 
it's tricky and there are lots of designers that haven't moved on with the times and will suffer But it's very interesting what you say because it probably means that some brands with the shift in society and the changes in human behavior and, and we could go into sociology and anthropology but then some brands maybe they extend the changes less than others? I mean there yeah. are brands that are universal and can afford any change, others maybe less? Yes. Absolutely. And maybe Donatella it's, and, and Versace Gianni before her and the brand, the Medusa, it's so, how do you say connotato? It's so, you know, framed around an image that... Um, iconic. Yeah, it's... Yeah, but the, yeah. I, I didn't want to say iconic, but I, yeah, it's, it's there. Um, it's so, the, yeah, what you think about it, it's so strong that it's hard to get out of it. But the richness and the, the glamour and the bacchanalian kind of energy of, of Versace and lots of Italian brands, that does not fit with a, with a world where we're being told we need, mm -hmm. you know, keep cups. That doesn't fit in a world where we're being, where, you know, women are now, young women in this country are having to try and get, you know, um, sanitary products for free at schools. That, that this does not fit, yeah. um, and the message is confusing. And I think, of course, there's no big there's no big filter here. There's no massive one person that can say, okay, this is what gender is right now. This is where we're at. But we're very much in this wonderfully confusing, open conversation. We're in the middle of that, and I think brands like this are the ones that are struggling, um, because I think a lot of people struggle in the way that they move too far against what they stand for. In a way, this woman still exists. But I think maybe they're also trying to speak to the new type of woman. That's it. And this is where the confusion is. Because they, their they, don't, they don't want to just serve what they've been doing yeah. over yeah. and over again. Fair enough. But I need to move on because there's so much more to talk. We cannot not talk about Prada. She, I think, the leader, yeah. one of her best collections. Yes. And, I mean, I, it's always great. But I thought... No, I love this. Th those flowers and those shapes and those... Hairstyle. I, I, I really enjoyed Frankenstein wife Wednesday becoming. Adams. Also, you know, mutuals always stand for like the borderline ugly that becomes beautiful. I think here, this is beautiful with a capital B. It's, yes. Even if it referenced something quite obscure, you know, the Adams family, and it's not really what you think about beauty, but it's, it's, it's extraordinary. Yeah, no. It's extraordinary. I mean, it's full of new things that will be copied, it's full of. Trends, it's full it's, of. It, there's a lot of uh, aggression in this collection as well that's presented yeah. very poetically, and I think that is something that. And skin, that we didn't see in Prada for a exactly. long time. Exactly. It's very, very smart. You know, there's kind of these looks that feel like they've just been, like the look there with the glasses. Um, it just looks that just look like they've been sort of thrown on and tied, and there's this real kind of aggressive energy, but it's presented to us in, in a very poetic, sensual way, which I, we well, haven't seen She was seen talking for a while. about love, and I think, but what, what strikes me the most in this specific look where, you know, the makeup is minimal, the uh, glasses are a little bit nerdy, and, you know, there is the whole Prada DNA, but all that skin, we've never seen it before. Mm. And hallelujah, I mean, it's Prada playing the sexy card, it's extraordinary because it's still so chic. Yes. And yet, you can see shoulders down almost to the breasts. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I thought it was a really, really strong collection, and also really nice at how the men's mirrors this as well. You know how there's yeah. a very clear, very much the a same, very concise exactly message, same, same venue, same, same set. set, yeah, same. You know, and it, and I think that's also very, very interesting in a kind of in a co-ed show world where designers are often showing the two together, but to show them separately, but to have the same message, there's something quite um, interesting about, about that m business decision, you know, because of course the, a lot of... To, of the co-ed. Yeah, because they, they could show together, because they show, you know, the, the clothes wouldn't jar, the collections wouldn't jar, and I wonder why they haven't. I hope they don't. Because they can. <laughs> yeah. Because they can afford to show us, probably. I think that the beginning of the co-ed was a not sociological movement, but it was... No practical one. Practical one. Then if, if Gucci does it, it's not because of the money. It's because he really wants to put the universe on a catwalk and yeah. he comes out with 110 looks. Yeah. But if, if Miucha doesn't, it's because she can. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? 
I think so. Maybe it's simplistic, but my God, I love this collection. The more I see it, the more I yeah. look at it. No, really and I really hope they're going to produce it and put it in store. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Well, it's not always the case. Well, a lot of the dresses, a lot of the prints, a lot of the... What stuff are you coveting? What do you want to buy? Oh, I want dresses? all those dresses and skirts with the flowers. I want, ah, yeah. I like the nerd look with the big um, sweater into the skirt and with a close-up shirt underneath. Yeah. That's so me. Yeah. But anyway, apart from what I like, I think this is fantastic and this is going to be copied and this is going to to change, I mean, this is the Shura in a modern way. And you have the boots too, which this is uh, the, we saw exactly, at Bottega, so there is a moment for that big, heavy it, sole. It makes more sense than yeah. the Bottega one. Um, quickly, um, the new, act number one. Mm. I mean, there are other new brands in Milan, new-ish, but I think act number one is probably the one that interests you did me the most. panel as well, right? I did a panel, I think these are ones to watch. First of all, they're not Italian, they're like a Georgian and a Kino Italian. I mean, he's a Chinese heritage boy that grew up in the province okay. of Italy and a Georgian boyfriend or friend, whatever, and they create this a collection in Milan that has a lot of Italian influence, but it's very, so much more forward than mm. maybe if not Prada everything else. What did you think? Did you have a look at it? I did, and I watched the show, and I, I wasn't at all... Impressed? ...moved, okay. or, or... Yes, I... I yeah, it, I, I, it just feels really naive and quite young, which is fine, because they, they are, are young, and it is young. Did you um, watch it... Sorry, I interrupt, but yeah. did you watch their three shows? Because what's very interesting is to see how... They have already their own signature. They have already their things that come back. Yeah. They have their idiosyncrasies. You see what I mean? And yeah. I think for such a young brand and, and, and people, it's very interesting. Yeah, it is. But I, you know, I don't know. I just, it just felt very, um, a lot of the ideas here felt a bit naive. Seen before? seen before and and maybe you know and it's interesting because again the argument about watching a live stream over watching the pictures even the moments where some of the models were having to climb over the mattresses so they did this um i found that slightly yeah. problematic because it felt I, I rather agree. it didn't look uh, harmonious or graceful no and and even if it wasn't meant to it felt really clumsy again you know it felt like why are you making these women look almost quite weak you know because like climbing over these I agree we had a long discussion yeah it, it just didn't feel i didn't feel like oh you're empowering yeah these these girls um and i think i really i think the prints were really beautiful and i think there was some, something that comes back in their collection and there were some really beautiful moments but i, I think the asian prints i think there's the play on shirting i got really tired of okay Oh, well, it's interesting. I let's, still, let's see what happens. Of I course. still think but maybe also it's because, and that's what we were saying in the panel, you know, uh, it's also because it is Milan and we have waited for a long time to see something new. I mean, we had this Stella Jean who's still there and I think mm. she still delivers. Um, She's not new, right? That's been a no, long not time. anymore. But I mean, I think she won, like they did, but I think she won who's next or the, what is yeah. called like in, in Alta Roma about four or five years ago. So it's still new compared, I mean, in Milan, we're talking Armani, Versace, Prada. I mean, that's five years is very new. Yeah. And also she has this ethical approach to, fa uh, to fashion. Yeah. And um, anyway, new, but not new brand is Marnie by uh, Francesco Russo. <laughs> and I think he's doing a great job. Yes. Um, he did this collection that he called Erotic, neuro, neuroerotic, something yes. that it was quite complicated to understand, but it was about sensual and, and brainy, you know, which makes me think about what we say about Prada, the intellectual. Everything happens here and less here, and yeah. he wanted to add so it's more the this, sex to that. Yeah, the cerebral and the corporeal, you know, this idea that exactly. women have two halves of their brains and in some Mine cases, well. Is, well, his references was to women, but yeah. yes, this idea that they are um, they're in conflict with each other. So yeah. the whole collection for me felt very 
aggressive and there was conflict in the clothes, there's conflict in I everything. I think that's what he wanted, right? Stitch, of yeah, course, yeah. and in the presentation of it um, with the super... It's been applauded a lot because I also think that he's doing a good job and he's now finally freed himself from Castiglione, you know what I mean? He's, he's doing his own money. When I look at this particular collection, for me, again, there's a little bit too much. I would take away some right. stuff. There's a little bit yeah. too many ideas or, or layers or it's trying a bit too hard for my taste. Yeah, but I mean, a show that is seven or eight minutes, it's got to smack you in the face. You know, you don't want to just that be one tickled. Did, for you sure. don't want to be tickled under the chin. And I think now more than ever, these kind of, these designers just understand that inherently, that they, they know that we can like take it all apart. So yeah, um, I think, it's, you're definitely right when you say that he has kind of steered Marnie in his own place Direction, and now it's there. Yeah, yeah. So the comparisons with um, the previous kind of um, view, vision of the house don't Which exist was the founder, anymore. so it's always more difficult, you know, to, to detach difficult. yourself. Well, also one of the, the um, a family member, I forget her name, but she's launched her own label, Plan yeah, C. The, yeah, the daughter. The daughter. So there's lots of kind of that money still Consuelo, exists in these yeah. other places. Well, it's very different. I mean, I, I, I don't think we, we prepare the images, but it's very different. And it's, um, you know, it doesn't do a show. It's a small thing. Yes. But the family is still behind suggesting it. Suggesting fashion. Yeah. But I think this goes very well cheek to cheek with Gucci in, in that. And also with act number one, you've got quite a lot of this fetishistic, um, quite punky, hard elements coming through in Milan, which yeah. you would never really expect. So there's a real darkness actually in Milan. A lot of the shows that we've talked about have had this quite heaviness. Well, talk about darkness. We have two minutes to mention the goodbye to Carl at Fendi. Yes. Uh, we will probably talk, we will talk about that uh, when we get to Paris, but um, Fendi, I mean, we already know that uh, delivered a show where, you know, Carl was present on every chair with his drawings. Um, uh, Michel Gobert played Hero, which he did also in Paris at the end of the Chanel show because it was his favorite song. Uh, there were a lot of tears apparently backstage that they were not in Paris. I guess people got over a little bit the emotion and uh, models tearing up during the show. So it was, it was, you know, and, and, and it was told and we read that uh, Carl was giving, from his hospital bed, was giving uh, final uh, touches to this collection wow. before passing. So he was very much present. Yes. And that was his, um, was Carl's tribute, Milan Carl's tribute. And um, a very good collection, I must say. Yes. Very what we talked about at the beginning, this kind of the day where that sort of level of, of glamour in yeah, a way. very Milanese. Very Milanese. Um, and really nice. Roman brand. What I enjoyed is obviously the FF logo that Carl designed mm -hmm. I think in the early 80s or hand drew. That is um, peppered throughout the collection, but in actually a really beautiful, subtle way. Um, and quite often, you know, Fendi is quite loud with its logos, particularly with its menswear, not so much with women's, but it, it really shouts its, its mm. double F logo. Mm. Um, whereas here it was really Subtle. done so sensitively and so yeah, Because I wonder how much actually it's true that there is, I mean, there's obviously the, this collection and um, I wonder at Fendi more than at Chanel was going to happen because, you know, as we know Chanel, it's for the moment business as usual with this number two and here is, Miss Fendi herself, but I don't know, she's not really a fashion designer, you know, she's more men and accessory designers, so I wonder what's going to happen there. Have yeah. you had any... No gossip yet, but who knows? I mean, I, mean, I guess it need, we need to think about what needs to happen, you know, there's a breath yeah, of exactly. fresh air, because with the loss of Carl, you, we've really lost a real time in fashion. Years and um, years and decades. And, um, and in a real different attitude to fashion and all of those things which Carl wonderfully had the energy up until the end to keep up with to a certain degree. But of course now is really, it's open to anybody and it's incredibly exciting to see um, what this change of, of the God is going to bring. Yeah, that's a good note to end our Milan discussion on. Thank you very much. Thank you. For being here. I hope I see you next season. I hope so too. And please stay tuned. Uh, watch us on our YouTube channel. 
subscribe and leave us your comments. We love to hear from you. Thank you and goodbye.